What's up, gamers? We're taking the gloves off and settling the console controller debate once and for all in 2024. In this no-holds-barred cage match video, we pit the PlayStation's slick new portal device against the mobile contender Backbone 1. Which controller will reign supreme with the slickest ergonomic design, lightning-fast response times, and most immersive gameplay? We're breaking down every inch of these innovative controllers to crown the ultimate winner. From battery life and customization to companion apps and hardcore performance, we leave no spec unturned, so make sure you watch till the end. For more information and updated prices, check the links in the description below. Without further ado, let's get started. First up, let's talk about the overall design and portability of each device, because that's crucial for any handheld. The Portal has a very sleek, minimalist design, modeled after the PS5 aesthetic. It's a single slab with rounded edges, and the controls built right in on either side. There's an 8-inch LCD screen in the middle. At 14 by 3.88 by 6 inches and weighing around 2.6 pounds, it's quite portable and easy to toss in a bag. The Backbone 1 is designed specifically for iPhones, with models fitting the iPhone 6S through current models and running iOS 13 or later. It's essentially a split controller that your phone sits inside. It adds some bulk, making your phone about twice as thick, but when not in use, it folds down flat for easy storage. At just 4.87 ounces, it adds minimal weight to your phone. So in terms of pure portability, I think the backbone has the edge. Your phone is likely going everywhere with you anyway, so clipping on the backbone keeps things sleek. The portal is still reasonably compact for an all-in-one device, but it is an additional thing you need to carry. Of course, with any handheld gaming device, the controls are extremely important. You want something that feels natural and allows you precise input. The portal again takes inspiration from the PS5 DualSense controller. You have your dual analog sticks, D-pad, face buttons, shoulder triggers, and vibration. It feels very much like playing with a standard PlayStation controller, which is a pro. The sticks feel smooth and responsive, and Sony's haptic feedback and adaptive triggers add immersion. The Backbone 1 mimics the layout of an Xbox controller, except for the menu and settings buttons and Backbone-specific buttons at the bottom right and left. You have your two sticks, A, B, X, Y buttons, D-pad, and bumpers and triggers. It also connects directly to the iPhone's lightning port or the USB-C port of compatible Android devices. This direct connection provides a more reliable and responsive gaming experience compared to Bluetooth connections, so latency is minimal. The tactile buttons and clicky sticks make for a satisfying console-like experience. Both offer a very familiar and accurate controller experience, but the Portal may win out again here because it was designed by PlayStation specifically for PS Remote Play. The Backbone 1 still plays great, but as a third-party accessory, it's hard to beat the OEM solution. A key differentiator between the devices is the display. The Portal has a built-in 8-inch LCD touchscreen running at 1080p resolution. With the Backbone 1, you're using your phone's native display. That's variable depending on your model. Larger phones like the iPhone 15 Pro Max have nearly 7-inch screens with resolutions upward of 2796 by 1290. But smaller phones can be well under 6 inches and have lower resolutions. Personally speaking, the portal screen size is right in the sweet spot. And because it was designed specifically for gaming by Sony, things like refresh rate, color accuracy, and latency are optimized. Your phone may have an impressive display, but it's still not purpose-built for gaming. I will say the flexibility of the backbone is nice here, though. If you have a premium phone with a high-resolution OLED display, that can look better than the Portal's LCD. But on average, the Portal's built-in screen is superior. Let's talk about battery life. Handheld gaming devices are meant for gaming on the go, so how long the battery lasts is really important. Here's where the backbone runs into some issues. Because it relies on your phone's battery to power everything, your gaming time is limited by your phone. Most premium phones these days have batteries in the 3 to 4,000 mAh range. For heavy gaming, that might get you 5 to 6 hours max. The Portal has its own built-in 4,370 mAh battery that Sony says lasts between 8 to 10 hours, depending on the game. So right off the bat, you're getting several more hours of playtime before needing to recharge. 
Yes, you can bring a power bank and charge your phone while gaming to extend the backbone's life, but you shouldn't have to worry about that with a dedicated handheld. A major consideration when choosing between these devices is what games you actually want to play on them. Let's explore how the game libraries compare. The PlayStation Portal can play compatible games you have installed on your PS5 console, including your favorite games for PS5 and PS4. The entirety of your game library is playable on the PlayStation Portable, with the only caveat being that the games must be compatible with the handheld device. The Backbone 1, on the other hand, is not locked to any one ecosystem. Because you're streaming from an Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, it works with most controller-enabled titles. You can access Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, Remote Play PS4 and PS5 games, use Steam Link or Moonlight for PC games, and even cloud services like NVIDIA GeForce Now. So the Backbone definitely gives you more flexibility in the games you can access. The portal locks you into PlayStation. But for some, only playing Sony's phenomenal exclusives is appealing enough. Overall, I have to hand this one to Backbone for its versatility, unless you're just a diehard PlayStation gamer. Connectivity is key for any device focused on game streaming. Let's discuss how the Portal and Backbone 1 connect to your home console and handle streaming. The Portal connects directly to your PS5 console using Wi-Fi. As long as you're within range of your home network, you can access your PS5 and stream games. Latency is generally very good since it's connecting locally, but you are limited by your Wi-Fi range and bandwidth, especially if you have other devices on the network. The Backbone leverages your phone's mobile data. It can remotely wake your home console and connect via the internet. This gives you more flexibility to roam and play anywhere with cell service. However, streaming over LTE or 5G is more prone to latency or resolution drops compared to local Wi-Fi. I give the Portal the edge for connectivity if you're mostly gaming inside your home. The direct Wi-Fi link keeps things snappy, but the Backbone's mobile support makes it better for gaming truly on the go. So, this one's a tie in my books. And finally, let's talk about the price. Depending on your budget, cost may be one of the biggest factors in your decision. The PlayStation Portal carries an MSRP of $199. Given the built-in controls, display, battery, and Sony licensing, that premium pricing makes sense. The Backbone 1 retails for only $99. That's $100 cheaper for essentially the same core gaming experience. Yes, you give up the integrated screen and battery, but from a pure value perspective, the backbone wins out here. After breaking all of that down, I think each device has clear advantages that will appeal to different users. The Portal is the premium, console-like handheld solution designed specifically for PlayStation Remote Play. If you want the purest, most integrated PlayStation handheld with top-notch controls and display, it's hard to beat. The Backbone 1 brings console-quality mobile gaming to your phone at an affordable price. $99 is an easy entry point. And its flexibility across different game platforms gives you more options. But relying on your phone does have some drawbacks for battery life and display. At the end of the day, I don't think you can go wrong with either as long as you know what you're getting. For the hardcore PlayStation gamer who travels a lot, the portal may be worth the investment, but budget-focused gamers will appreciate the value afforded by the backbone. Also, note that the PlayStation 5 console needs to be within a sufficient distance from the PlayStation portal to maintain a stable and responsive connection for remote play. A stable connection is crucial for a smooth gaming experience, and the distance between the console and the portal can impact the quality of the connection. To optimize the connection, it is recommended to position the Portal and PS5 in a way that minimizes obstructions and maximizes signal strength. That's it for today's video. For more information and updated prices about the products mentioned, check the links in the description box below. While you're at it, be sure to let me know which one you would pick and why down in the comments. I hope this detailed comparison helped give you clarity on the PlayStation Portal vs Backbone 1 debate. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and enable notifications so you don't miss future videos. Enjoy your gaming!